Glitterati. If you've listened to our show, I'm sure you've heard someone talk about their blueprint. And we're like, what does that mean? Well, it's the secret code to creating a mind-blowing erotic ecstasy. And we have one of our favorite sex experts in the studio with us today. She's a top-level erotic blueprint practitioner here to break it down. Please welcome back to the studio, Caitlin V. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thank and you. So the, good to be And one of the dopest humans we just know in general. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm so excited to be back and talking about one of my favorite subjects and also just excited to learn more about each of you all mm -hmm. um, because yes. the erotic blueprints has a habit of, um, of exposing us. So I think I know what your blueprints are, but I cannot wait to hear your self-reported blueprint types. We will have to do that. You'll have to guess first. Yeah, I was going to say, I kind of want you to guess. Oh, I did just, I fully just put myself on the spot and I stand by it. <laughs> okay. Okay. That sounds okay, fun. This is now, amazing. Yeah. So yeah. So in preparation for this episode, we all took the quizzes as well as our partners did because our listeners are so familiar with us and, um, and our crazy sex campaigns. We thought they could, you know, at least see themselves in us a little bit today, but we're going to start with. Um, so anybody who wants to do this quiz, you do have a link for them, right? Yes, I've got a link. Um, it's specific to me. So if you don't mind checking out the show notes and clicking on the link, taking the erotic blueprint quiz, it will give you your results as percentages. It's super easy. It's a really fun quiz to take. It kind of, I mean, it opens up your mind with some of the options and questions that they ask, and it's fun to do with a partner, um, although definitely better to do solo so that you can answer, you know, ex for yourself. Yeah, uh, and it's totally free. It takes like five minutes. So, yeah, it's super short. Um, and the re so I want you to explain, but basically the gist of it is there's, there's like five different sexual archetypes, right? So can you yeah. kind of explain to us a little bit of the history of what exactly this is, why it's such a valuable tool, and a little bit about each of the archetypes. Totally. So the erotic blueprints are like our roadmaps to eroticism. And there's sort of like different languages. And each of us has sort of our own combination of languages that we speak, a language that we're really proficient in, a language that we can speak, but it, we're maybe not as qualified or maybe not as practiced in speaking that language. And when I first heard them, I actually heard them on a podcast uh, from their creator, my mentor, Jaya, and I literally stopped in traffic which I don't recommend no one listening to please don't stop in traffic, even nope. no matter how loud you are by what we're about to share. Because when she shared my blueprint type, I fully got it. I was like, yes, that's me. I'm starving. I'm dying. I, I need, and now I understand that it's okay that I have these needs and these wants and these desires and they make me totally normal. And there's a type with a name on it and uh, there's hope. And I immediately signed <laughs> I like drove home <coughs> the rest of the way safely and I went to their website and I signed up for literally everything. I was just like, take my credit card. I tell me more like what, what else do you know? So they're incredibly powerful and the, the people who they are most powerful for, I think are the people for whom, um, uh, like what they think of as eroticism and sex and what they've been taught qualifies as sex and sexy doesn't always work or doesn't work at all. Uh, and they're also really great. So they're great if you're single. They're also great if you're partnered. And if you're partnered and you and your partner have different like libidos, you know, is often kind of what we chalk it up to. We just have mismatched libidos. But often it's just that you have different blueprints and you haven't been able to build a bridge between your blueprints. So this is really powerful for getting our needs met, for like understanding what our needs really are, and also for creating hot, juicy sex with our partners. Okay. So I'll give you a quick rundown. Like Lizzie said, there are five erotic blueprints. Um, I'm going to give them to you in the order that I recommend you try testing them if you're not familiar. So this is the best way to also approach your partner with these blueprints, but there's no particular order. They're not hierarchical. They're all wonderful. So the first blueprint is the energetic blueprint and the energetic blueprint is turned on by space and teas and the the desire or the absence of physical touch and the presence of an energetic 
connection. They like non-genital touch. They like feeling the energy in between people, but they also are very sensitive. They can be almost like a antenna. They're taking in all of this information all of the time, and it can be very easy for them to short circuit. And maybe when a partner goes directly to their genitals with a ton of touch, they can totally fry. Their, 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 their antenna can just fry from all of the information. The best way to turn on and arouse an energetic is, and I apologize, podcast listeners, you'll have to watch this video on Patreon because I'm going to do a little demo here. Um, they are turned on by spacious touch, fingertip light touch, feather light touch, and, and, and presence in that touch. Um, and like I said, they can be turned off by too much direct, intense uh, their superpower is their sensitivity. They can have full body orgasms without even being touched. Yeah, what they're you, incredible. How do we become like this? this is the energetic. <laughs> energetic. Energetic. Yeah. And they're like, right. they're very sensitive. If something is off between them and their partner, they can, they, they will feel that. And that may be gets in the way of them experiencing their full erotic potential. But on the other hand, you know, these people are great fits for like, tantric sex and moving energy and feeling the connection between people. We'll, we'll get into all of that. Okay. Second type is the sensual blueprint and the sensual blueprint loves closeness and touch and being turned on in their five senses, their sights and their smells and the tastes. And they can really luxuriate in pleasure for long and extended periods of time. I mean, like sensuals can do a massage and then a bath and then a cuddle and then a massage again. And, or, you know, maybe that, that they're more into having the exact right music playing in the background and the exact right sheets on the bed and the, 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 if there's dirty dishes in the sink that just messes them up, that has got to get taken care of for them to be able to like fully drop in. They also tend to be attracted to things that like are sensual in nature. So a good example is like, you really know a sensual based on how they eat their food. Uh, they'll moan, they'll, they're moaners, they're total moaners. They can totally have like a, 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 a strawberry orgasm or like a sunset gasm, right? They can have non-body or non, non-genital orgasms. And again, they can have orgasms without being touched. And again, for sensuals, they really don't love direct, intense genital stimulation from the jump. They like to be touched with a contouring hand, like a massage touch all over their body. Okay, so that's the sensual. Their shadow side is that they can lose an orgasm. They often can get stuck up in their head. They can be like so close to coming and then all of a sudden like poof, it just goes away. What happened to it? Or a thought enters their head and then they can't get back into their body. So they respond to uh, more intense, don't not necessarily painful, but intense sensation, like a firm grasp, a firm grasp, or maybe like a spank on the butt to help them to stay in their bodies. So that is the sensual. They also can have sensual shadow. You know, people, I, I see this a lot in my coaching practice where someone's like, I have to have a shower before or after sex. That can be a sensual shadow um, showing up. Mm. So the what do you, what do you mean now. by a shadow? Like, it's oh, great question. Yeah, when I say shadow, I don't want to say like they don't have a downside. You know, I don't want to call these negative aspects. These are more just like the shadow aspects, the okay. the um, the hidden the aspects of each of the blueprints that we are less likely to um, honor and appreciate. Got it. Okay, kind of like the quirks. Like, yeah. Yeah. And the okay. stuff that like, if you, you know, if you hear that and you're like, oh my God, that's telling me I have that shadow side. That's great. That means that using the superpowers of the sensual and focusing on healing the shadow aspects is going to improve your connection to your eroticism. Got it. Yeah. Mm, this um, is, that makes sense. Yeah. You yeah, get to appreciate wow, your superpower. Okay. I feel like listeners are already starting to see like where they're at here and we're not mm -hmm. even halfway through mm -hmm. the blueprints. A hundred percent. So we're the, all we're all a combination. It's not like you're a hundred percent of any of these. You're like mm -hmm. when you take the quiz, it's like I'm thirty percent this, I'm twenty percent this, which is cool. Like we're all a combination of all of them. Totally. And the quiz online will sometimes say you're a zero percent one or you're you know you're thirty three, thirty three, thirty three, thirty three, all five. And the best way to source that information and figure out what your blueprint type is is going to your body. Because we tell ourselves lies, and it's an online quiz. It's not perfect. It doesn't cover all scenarios. But we tell ourselves all the time, like, 
no, I'm not really into that. But like if I test your body, which is what I did to sugar mm. and the silver fox, we got to learn how their bodies actually mm. responded to each of these touches. And then you actually learn that maybe like, you know, her left arm actually is really sensual, <laughs> even though she may not consider herself to be sensual. Mm-hmm. We'll talk more about that. Let's get this, I'll get yeah, through the rest so, of the blueprint. So, good. So, so, so good. the third blueprint is the sexual blueprint. And this one's really important because this is how most of us are conditioned. This is the blueprint that we were raised to believe was the only way to enjoy sex and eroticism. And the sexual blueprint is direct. They are zero to a hundred. They are simple. Sex is straightforward. Is it about, it is about genitals and orgasms and it is like, just like turned on by naked bodies, XXX, porn, strip club, like, you know, what we typically think of as sex is the sexual blueprint. Their superpower is their simplicity. Sex can just be simple and straightforward and like not that big of a deal. They don't need all the, they don't need a playlist and they don't need an energetic connection. They like naked body, genitals, let's go. The shadow side of the sex. It's it's nice when you just get naked and take a shower and they're like, hi. I guess that's, that's yeah. a superpower. I'm like, oh. It totally God. is a superpower, right? <laughs> They're just like ready to go, zero to 100. Like, yeah. um, let's Which can feel get really down. nice for their partners. Mm-hmm. But it can also be for those partners who, who are more the energetic or the sensual and are like, why are you jumping right to my genitals? Oh, you know, like, yeah, get, get back. Why? Like, mm-hmm. why aren't you starting? Can you massage me for a while first? And then the sexual is going, why? Yeah. <laughs> But you're it's why do you be like, uh, no? Yeah. And because shop, they've shop. been told that their way of doing sex is the way that sex is meant to be done, they often don't understand that the other ways are equally as valid. Right? Yeah. Um, they sense. also, like, sexuals often need sex just like they need air or, as my friend's partner calls it, like rice. Rice can be dolled up. It can be made into a million different dishes. But, like, it's just present and it's just the foundation of the meals. And if you don't have anything else, you can just eat rice on its own. Or I've heard it compared to air. Sex is just like air. I need it. I need it to breathe. I need it to get by. It's like, it's, it's not complicated, but it is a big part of my existence. And so for sexuals, sex can just be this ever present need for them. And sometimes if they're in a relationship with like an energetic and they're always just trying to go for penetration, the energetic is frying. The sexual doesn't understand and feels like they're not capable of getting their needs met or maybe their needs are being treated as shameful or unimportant. Yeah. Um, but and there's you know, somebody and so, listening right now that's like, that is so me. A hundred percent. Or that's my that husband. Too. Yeah. Oh, you know? oh my God. Yeah. He just needs and wants sex and I'm not ready. And I'd rather have quality over quantity, but he just does it every day. And you know, the trick for them is figuring out a compromise where like, you know, maybe he meets his own needs through masturbation, but sometimes you jump in and you, you know, tweak his nipples while he jacks off or, you know, you give a show or like, you know, he, he does the same for you. I used to, um, give my partner to like, just come in and, and like choke me and lick my neck. I, I, you don't need to have sex with me, but I want to include you in something that is sexual or else I feel like you know, if you could, I feel like I'm not um, not getting my needs met. These like really just core basic needs of the mm-hmm. sexual blueprint. So mm-hmm. that's the third mm-hmm. blueprint. The fourth blueprint is the kinky blueprint. And kink is subjective. What is kinky to me may not be kinky at all to you. And what's kinky to you may be super kinky and taboo to me. It's whatever is taboo for you. And that can include psychological kink or physical kink. So often when we hear the word kinky, we think of like dungeons and whips and chains, but that is not the whole picture. I mean, that's not even a part of the picture. Like depending on how you were raised, or it is part, but it is not the biggest part. Depending on how you were raised, like doggy style and hair pulling might be extremely taboo to you, right? And name calling, you know, you slut, you come dumpster. Like that can be extremely kinky. Role play can be super kinky. I love that one in particular. I love that one. Uh, I think you're gonna. The I particularly <laughs> love that one. I do. Okay, I like that's that a one favorite. Too. Um, to say or to be said too. Oh, to have that said to me. Both, both ways. Okay, got it. You too. I love that. Now, um, now you know what my archetype is. <laughs> I already know. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. See, I just recently discovered that like it turns me off to be told I'm a bad girl and only turns me on to be told I'm a good girl. Mm-hmm. But that Which is could be a form of kinky. Yeah. 
That could yeah. be taboo too. Being a good girl can be taboo. Being validated in that way could be taboo for you. Mm. Right? Because it's still, there's a lot of like power play and kinky, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like if you're a good girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. But right, I that could be like the power code for, you know, you're a good, you're such a good sub and you follow daddy's directions. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Mini segue. My friend okay, spanked my butt and told me I was a bad uh, girl. And I was like, don't tell me that ever again. That's a huge <laughs> for me. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I was like, I'm going to cry. <laughs> Do you really think I'm a bad girl? It's like, no, I was just. Okay, good. I'm and remember, just so delighted that this is actually being videotaped because I'm so glad we just got Katie's facial reactions to what we were just talking about. Oh, yeah. It was kind of one of these. She was like, the fuck? Her eyes just <laughs> bloop. Yeah. I'm like, I have one of those faces that can't hide anything. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? Yes, so. No, I should have been watching you more thinking. as I was giving this blueprint rundown. It's Okay. I have, a, I have a, I took the test. I have a guess. Oh, um, uh, you have a guess. I have a guess. And we'll keep going. Okay. So we'll the superpower going. of the kink blueprint is that they're very creative. You know, they can take a fork and turn it into a thousand different sex toys and create all these different sensations and, um, or, you know, they can, they can whip up these incredible stories, fantasies, you know, even getting specific on good girl, bad girl, right? That takes a lot of creativity and play to even get to the point where you have that specific information on like your turn on. The shadow side of the kink blueprint is that it is the blueprint of shame. So people have people who have, you know, shame around their kinks. Um, the, or people can commonly have shame around their kinks, I should say. And then the other shadow side is that sometimes people need increasingly more intense kink in order to get off. Right. So if you're used to like spanking and then you find that you can't really get aroused without spanking and then you need caning and then you need this additional play and all that, again, there's nothing wrong that just can be a shadow side of the kink blueprint. And then so there, there's kink, that's blueprint number four. And then blueprint number five is the shapeshifter. And the shapeshifter has all four of the other blueprints and they can have all four of their superpowers. They can have all four of their shadow sides. But the shapeshifter, notably in our culture, is mostly told that they are too much. And this is what clicked for me and why I stopped my car in the middle of an intersection. Because the, blue, the shapeshifter needs to have all four blueprints met. But they often shapeshift to meet their partner. So if you're with a sexual partner, you shapeshift into the sexual blueprint, and, but you're starving for energetic. Or you're with an energetic partner, mm. you're starving for sensual. And when you try to get all these needs met, especially you know, within a, a, a relationship where someone is one blueprint or maybe two, they can come back at you and say, you know, like you have too many needs. You're, you're asking for too much. And so shapeshifters are often very hungry. And that was me sitting in the intersection a starving shapeshifter who had absolutely no idea that, you know, my superpower was I was capable of speaking in all four of these different languages and that I had been constantly shaping myself into what each of my partners needed without actually having the tools in the language to ask for my needs to get met. Plus the shame of feeling like my needs were just too much. And so keeping myself like down and small, and that is when the, the like switch totally flipped and it just clicked and here I am today. Yeah. Wow. <laughs>